Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing another Morse Circle problem. And this one's going to be easy today since we already covered the basics of Morse Circle. We're just going to be looking at what shear stress max is going to be, which is different from max in plane shearing stress. Uh, so the problem we're going to be using is going to help us demonstrate that. The problem goes as so. We have at a point in a structural member subject to plane stress. There is normal and shearing stresses on a horizontal and vertical plane shown at the point below. It's asking us to determine and show on a sketch the principal stresses and the max shearing stress at the point. So as we discussed in our previous video uh, on principal stresses, we discussed that the max in plane stress uh, will take the assumption that sigma P3 or the normal stress at P3 is equal to zero. So what does that mean? That means that the stress coming out of the page, uh, if you look at this demonstration here, if we had it sigma P3, it would be acting something like this, where it's coming out of the page and we're taking it as zero right off the rip. And we make this assumption because principal planes uh, have to be analyzed considering that one of the stresses acting at a principal plane will always be zero. However, max stress will be dictated uh, differently from the max in plane shearing stress because the magnitude and the direction uh, of the stresses acting in the principal plane do influence what that max potential sh uh, shearing stress can be. So, as we mentioned before, we had formulas that were designated to determine the max shearing stress, which are here, here, and here. And they're based on conditions of the principal stresses acting on the triangular element. So, in this first case, we have two stresses which are acting in opposite directions, or opposite signs, if you like to think about it. And this formula will give you your max shearing stress. And similarly with the other two cases, we have the same sign or the same direction that the uh, these stresses are going to be acting, either tensile or compressive. And the formulas here are dictating what the max shear stress will be based on the orientation of these stresses. Now, what does that mean? This means that we are now considering this sigma P3 to be acting on the principal planes of this triangular element. What does that mean? We are replacing the values that are inputted into the formula. We know sigma P3 is equal to zero. So we're changing out sigma P3 for sigma P2 in this case. And in this case, we're subbing out sigma P1 for sigma P3. Now, the Morse circle down here actually demonstrates each of the possible conditions that we have for max shearing stress. So as you can see, we have three different points where an apex is formed. And each of these circles demonstrates a different orientation for this triangular element. And as we get into the problem, we're going to see what all of this means. So we can start off with the basics. We have to identify what our stresses are. So we have a stress at X, which is right here at 72 MPa. The stress at Y, acting tensile, meaning it's positive, will be 36 MPa. And we have the shear stress XY which is this element acting here, which if we imagine the y-axis, this is acting in the opposite direction. So we actually have to take this as negative 24 MPa. Now we proceed as we normally would. We have to find this V and this H. So if you look at V, we need to take the normal stress at X, which is 72. And we need to take the negative of the shear XY. So our shear stress at XY is negative 24. So the negative of that will be 24. Then similarly for the H, we are taking the Y, which is 36, and we are taking the negative 24 as it is. Next, we can determine our stress average, which will give us our center point of this circle here, highlighted in pink. So we have sigma average, which will equal to 72 plus 36 over 2, equating to 54 MPa which is this pink point right here. Now, as I discussed in that previous Morse circle video, we're going to be using uh, the X and the Y created by this radius to determine all of the important points of this triangular element being the principal theta that we need to determine where that principal plane is acting. So what is our X component? Our X component is going to be the uh, sigma X, which is this value we've already inputted in our V, 
which is going to end up somewhere here on the axis and taking away that sigma average. So if we did that, we're going to have sigma x minus sigma average, which is equal to 72 minus 54, which will equal to 18. And we can do the same for y. We have to consider the distance created by the shear input, which is going to be 24 MPa. Why? Because our y-axis is actually the shear stress. So we know that input was already 24, so that gives us our height. Next, we can then take Pythagoras to determine the radius of this uh, Mohr circle. So we're going to have 18 squared plus 24 squared, giving us 30. And we talked about in our previous video that the max in plane shear stress is going to be this r, or this radius. And that is going to equal the max in plane shearing stress. Next, we can determine 2 theta p, which is the principal angle multiplied by 2. That is going to give us the orientation of this element for that principal plane's location. And that is going to be equated to tan inverse, the opposite over the adjacent. So it's 24 over 18, which will give us 53. 1, 3 degrees. And then this is acting in the clockwise direction. So we need to indicate that. Thus, we can solve for theta p on its own, which is dividing by 2 to give us 57 degrees. All right, so now that we've added our findings to the initial Mohr circle that we have, we can now consider what our principal stresses are. So we know that sigma p1 if you've seen the previous video, is going to be sigma average plus this distance here. What is this distance? It is the radius. So we have sigma average plus r, which is equal to 54, plus 30, which will give us 84. Next, we have sigma p2, which is a very similar formula, except now we are subtracting that radius to get here. So we're left with 54 minus 30, which will give us 24. And as we discussed earlier in the video, sigma p3 is equal to zero, which is plotted right here. Now the normal stress and shear stress acting on this 45 degree plane for the unaltered triangular element in 2D is going to be equal to a normal stress of sigma average, which we found earlier. Why? Because that max in plane shear stress is landing right at the center of that circle. Because this is the apex of the circle, this is the center, radius, blah, blah, blah. So this is going to equal to 54 MPa. And we know that the max in plane shear stress is discussed earlier as 30 MPa, the radius of that circle. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes we have to consider the orientation of this triangular element where sigma p3 is now considered. So let's look at the rules for the equations here. We have to first look at the signs. R sigma p1 and p2 right here are both of the same sign. This means that this first case is not considered. Now, which one's bigger? Sigma p1 is 84, sigma p2 is 24. Sigma p1 is much greater, meaning that we have to consider shear max equal to sigma p1 minus 0 over 2, which is going to equal to 84 divided by 2, which is equal to 42, which is greater than 30, meaning that it is the max shear stress. And we can see this visually on our Mohr circle here when we consider principal stress 3 and principal stress 1 acting on the principal planes it does generate that apex or that max shear stress now what's the normal stress acting on this inclined plane here then well we can solve for it as we solved for before we know that that normal stress is going to equal to sigma average however we need to consider the sigma average for this circle and what is that going to be? We have sigma p1 and sigma p3. If we take those sums and divide it by 2, 
it will plot right at the center. So as we've done before, we're going to have 84 plus 0 for sigma p1 and sigma p3 divided by 2. And that will give you the normal stress acting, which is 42 MPa. Now we can plot all of these on our final sketch, which I'll show in the next part of this video. All right, so now I've drawn up the stress elements that we're going to be plotting on. We have an initial principal uh, angle of 26.57 degrees, as found before, which gives us our first triangle element to determine the max in-plane shearing stress and the max normal stress on this inclined plane, along with sigma P2 and P1, where we are not considering sigma P3 as an influence on this shear stress. So working from top to bottom, we have solved for these values. We have 54 MPa for the normal stress on that inclined plane. The max in-plane shear stress is going to be the radius, which we solved for earlier, which is 30. We have a sigma P1, which we also solved for as 84, and a sigma P2, which is equal to 24. Now, the element that considers the reorientation of this triangular element is going to give us our max shearing stress. And we determined that our max shearing stress is going to be equal to 42 MPa. The normal stress produced about this plane is going to be equal to the sigma average from that Mohr circle, or simply this calculation where we take the maximum principal stress and we add zero to represent sigma P3, which gave us 42 MPa. And we have the principal stresses that are considered as influencing these in-plane stresses, which are equal to that value we calculated earlier as 84 MPa. And sigma P3 equals to 0. 